how does your generative AI co-pilot, how's it gonna differ from some other offerings from some of your competitors? And also, how do you plan to monetize it? Will, will it be a subscription service? Yeah, so Frank, you actually already shared the story pretty well. I mean, first of all, <laughs> our vision is to help the world run better and improve people's lives. And generative AI will have a revolutionary impact on businesses. And think about it. There are 300 million end users working day in and day out with SAP software. We are touching 80% of the world's transactions. And so we are sitting between the nexus between business and technology. So SAP Business AI will be extremely relevant when it comes to infusing intelligence, when it comes to infusing automation into the world's businesses. All right, so SAP is the global leader when it comes to ERP software, pretty broad category that covers everything from supply chain to finance to human resources. Um, you have a big lead over a lot of your competitors. How is infusing AI into this business? How is it gonna change it? Do you think it's gonna lead to a generation of more revenue? Like what's the difference there? I mean. Frank, you already said it. I mean, we are touching every business process, so the end-to-end -end value chains of our customers. So when you actually interact with Jewel, our co-pilot, you can ask any kind of analytical question and you get smart answers around how to decarbonize supply chain. You can solve any kind of complex financial question. You can automate and you can completely redefine how end users work with our software. So of course, that drives immense value. And of course, with value also comes you know, a very great business opportunity for SAP. So yes, there will be a premium offering coming. We also launch this in the upcoming weeks. And so customers can consume generative AI out of the box with our software. So just want to be clear, you say a premium offering. So that's, that's the monthly subscription you're talking about. Exactly. Okay, I just want to be clear there. So as we enter Q4, um, obviously you're a big tech company in Europe. You also have the majority of your customers here in the U.S. What are your customers telling you when it comes to demand for AI and services um, and also their willingness right now to pay up for those services and what's been kind of an uncertain economic environment? I mean, Frank, I mean, when I watched the news this morning on CNBC, it's all about the macro. It's all about inflationary pressure. It's about de decarbonization. And this is what our software does. And then when you're going to infuse generative AI exactly into the business processes where it matters the most, uh, to drive more productivity inside the company, to decarbonize, to make smarter decisions faster. This is exactly what companies need these days. And this is why we are actually also, especially also in the U.S., extremely optimistic when it comes to the demand for SAP business AI. Okay. Um, Amazon made news a few days ago. They invested in Anthropic. You've also invested in Anthropic along with Aleph Alpha, another company that we've had here on the show. Give us a sense, where, where are we at when it comes to this AI you know, arms race? Um, are you planning to invest in more companies? Are you possibly planning to acquire a company to bring their capabilities in-house? I mean, Frank, all of these partnerships are extremely relevant, not only for SAP, I guess I would say even more for our partners. Yeah, because these large language models, they need great data. They need a foundational data model. They need prompts to actually also provide smart and uh, answers to the end users. Right. And this is what SAP is developing. We are building the world's largest foundational data model, which really spans across the company and doesn't stop only at sales. And then with these partnerships, especially for the large language models, actually we are building the most powerful generative AI stack in the industry. And this is what we are doing, partnering on LLM, but working while we are building the most powerful foundational data model, which actually spans across enterprises. So let me ask you, this is a question I think a lot of people are trying to figure out. If a lot of different companies are investing in the same startups to get access to their capabilities, how do you get an edge over the other companies? Doesn't it, it seems like all of you are buying into the same companies and basically buying the same abilities. Yeah, well, you are buying into the, this large language models, but what differentiates SAP and what also then, why are these partners so eager to partner with us? I mean, think about that. When end users ask any kind of question to Joule, not every end user is allowed to see every piece of data in a company. So you need data privacy, you need authorizations. And guess which company does that for many customers out there? This is where customers rely on SAP. You need great data. You need access to very sensitive data. We have access to data from over 400,000 customers. This is a treasure. This is what generative AI needs. And so this is why these partnerships are relevant. And while the, the large language model is getting more and more commoditized, what really matters is data privacy and the foundational data model.